Welcome back. This video is going to be a, a bit longer and a less formal version of the last uh, three videos I made before. And it will be a continuation of the last three videos. So at this point, you should have already completed exercises 70 through 72. And so for this video, I will be walking through exercises 73 up to 76 and then 78 to 80. Uh, and this is specifically for my ERP-1 integration class that I'm lecturing for. So uh, let's just hop right into it. So first we're going to look at exercise 73, which is to assign a resource to an activity. So in order to do that, what you have to do is go to logistics, project system, project, project planning board, and change project. Because the first thing we have to do is we have to assign a work center to this, to an activity so that we can uh, choose which employees will work on that activity. So you should already have your project created. So I'm just going to hop into mine. And in this case, we're going to change the activity called engineering of case. So you want to double click anywhere on there. From here, you want to go to where it says Work Center and type in 2700 and then click the green check mark. Then from here, you want to select all, edit, functions, and activate capacities. And then it says uh, it'll, the capacity calculation was activated and takes place from next scheduling. So we have to reschedule the project make sure everything is still selected on the side and click schedule up here then you'll see that scheduling has been carried out at this point you can save your project it'll bring you back here then what you'll want to do is back out close up project there you, sh you should still see project system go down to resources workforce planning project view because now that we've assigned a work center to our project or specifically that one activity then we can start actually picking employees that uh, should work uh, on that activity so we've got our we should have our project listed here as well as profile 1302 click on execute then from here we have all of our various activities that have been assigned to that are in this project I should say. So what we can do is highlight engineering of case, that's the one we were just managing uh, a minute ago. Highlight that, go to this white piece of paper to create an assignment. Then what we see here is a variety of various employee or personnel uh, IDs and their names. Now for the actual workshop on Thursday you will each be assigned an employee number and uh, you will share that number with two other people uh, just because the this client has a limited number of employee numbers and there's 52 of you so uh, for this example I'm going to just use this person right here this person is actually not going to be used at all in the workshop on Thursday so you want to highlight the person that you were assigned hit the green check mark their name will show up here. Next, you want to highlight their name here. Go down to this little red and green button you see here. Click on that. Then we have this show up. And then you want to scroll to the right until you see some white boxes. And it's here that you want to type in 15 for each white box you see. If you uh, Depending on the brightness of your monitor, you might not see it very well, but you can see four white boxes right there. And uh, if you only see three white boxes, then you'll just need to type in 20 for each box, so that way 60 hours uh, are accounted for. So once you type in whichever number it is, that'll give you 60 hours. You want to hit the Enter button. That'll make some stuff change over here.
And then this is where you want to take your screenshot for exercise 73. So what I need to see is your your project name. I need to see that it's 170 now because 230 minus 60 is 170. And as well as all of this information here. And of course, your user number or user ID. So you take your screenshot, you paste it into uh, the document that you'll be given, all that good stuff, and you can go ahead and click Save. So what's next? Next we have to do exercise 74. We have to plan costs for our project. So to do this, we need to go back to the project planning board. So you can close some stuff up here, open up project again under project system, project planning board, change project, then you'll want to open up your project again. So in this case, what we want to do is create a, a cost activity underneath of engineering and design. So you want to make sure the box next to engineering and design is checked. Then you want to click on create up here. So this little side panel will open up and what you want to do is under activity, this little dark green box, not this, but, but this, you want to go down to where it says costs and double click on that. So then we'll see that this appears. We can minimize this just by clicking right here. Double click on, on this. And then from here, there's a couple pieces of information we need to put in. So change this to 1050, change this to additional costs. And for amount, we want to type in 4,000. And then we can hit the green check mark. So now at this point, you want to make sure that this thing, this little column here is displayed so we can see all the numbers nicely. You'll notice that currently we don't see 4,000 listed here. So what we have to do, one moment, is recalculate our costs. So we do that by clicking select all. So everything's selected. Then go to, over to where we have this little calculator symbol and click on that to calculate your costs. So then if it gives you this little box right here, just click yes to reschedule everything. So click yes. And now we can see the 4,000 here. So this is where you would take your next screenshot so that I can see, you know, the name of your project. I can see that you have this new uh, additional costs activity with 4,000 listed and your username, of course. Uh, and if and if this is if this is minimized and it's giving you problems, try uh, try fooling around with this. If you get this kind of problem where suddenly it gets stuck, you might have to back up and try it again. So I'll click no to not save, and I'll quickly hop back in and create this again and just make sure it's expanded this time. Yeah, you don't wanna, you don't wanna cause yourself a problem like that because then your screenshot will not be good enough. So I'll fix these really fast. Calculate my costs once again, schedule, yes. And then take my screenshot just as it is with these two things being the most important part. So once you do that, you can click save. And you can click save once again. And now you're back here. So that's exercise 74. Next is exercise 75 where we are assigning a budget to our project. So to do that, you wanna be at the project system level. Go down to financials, budgeting, original budget, and change. From here, just make sure that your project is listed there, then click on original budget up here. So then from here, we've got our different WBS elements, and you want to enter in these values for all the decimal points right here, not the top one, but all these other ones. So 1500, and these, uh, these correspond to the values listed in the TERP-10 handbook. 
So yeah, you can pause at any time to get these written down if uh, I'm going too fast for you. So those are what you need. And then uh, the next thing we want to do is total these up. Well, actually, I could hit enter next. It'll make some stuff pop up. But if I want to see the actual total, I have to go up and click on edit and total up. And that will make that value appear. That value is important for your screenshot. So make sure that you have that. So at this point, these pieces of information are what you need. Plus, I need to see, of course, that it is your project. And I need to see your username. So that's so right now is where you take your next screenshot. And then after that, you can click on Save. And uh, if, it, if it says warnings were detected, you can just click Yes, it's fine. So that's exercise 75. So next, we have exercise 76. So I'll back out, minimize some things. So the first thing you have to do in exercise 76 is go back to the project builder. So project system, project, project builder. Open up your project. Then from here, what you need to do is you need to release your project because this exercise is all about entering in actual times uh, for the for the project, actual dates, but you can't enter in actual dates without the project being officially released. So to release your project from the project builder screen, you have to highlight the actual project itself, the turbine project group, highlight that so that you see it on the side here, and then go up to edit, status, release so this will release the project so that it's actually beginning then you'll know that it's released by seeing this little rel listed right here and once you've done that you can click save so then you can back out so next what we want to do is go to the cross application timesheet or the cats screen and the way you do that is you minimize project Go down to where it says progress underneath the project system. Go to confirmation, timesheet, cats classic, and then record working times. From here, you want to type in your data entry profile, which is 1301, and then the personnel number that you uh, will be assigned. Uh, if you're practicing, if you're practicing, of course, you are going to want to use your number actually technically you could use any number in the terp 10 client if you're just practicing but the general recommendation is that you would use your number plus 1920 because all of the all of the personnel numbers are given all like start with 1920 and then go up so if you're in the practice client if your number is 07 you would do 1920 plus seven, so that would be 1927. Um, but as I said, in the workshop on Thursday, you'll be uh, assigned the personnel number. So in this case, I'm gonna use 1920, because that's the one. At the end of the day, you wanna use the number that you used in exercise 73. Now, one warning ahead of the workshop on Thursday is the fact that because you will be sharing a personnel number with two other students, only one of you can access this personnel number at a time within exercise 76, within this CATS screen. So if you, uh, if you enter in these two pieces of information and then click on this pencil and it gives you an error message saying that this personnel number is locked by another user, then what I would recommend is moving on to exercises 78 and 79 and and coming back to this particular screen uh, to finish exercise 76 because uh, if you just leave now go do some other activities and come back uh, it'll be just fine you won't have any problems just as long as you aren't still locked out when you come back which hopefully you won't unless someone is taking their dear sweet time so you enter in these two pieces of information you click on the pencil from here, you'll see this screen. Now this will look a little bit different, or as you might already tell, this looks different from 
the way the Terp 10 client is laid out. For some reason, there are these extra columns here, but if you scroll over to the right, it looks it looks the same as before, and same same with this. Now, as you can see, I've been doing this numerous times, uh, so mine looks a bit different, but pretty much all you have to do on this step is you want to highlight the activity. In this case, it's the 1200 activity engineering of case that we were managing on exercise 73. You want to select that, go to this icon here that says copy row. When you click on that, it's going to spit out a new row down here in the data entry area. And on the first three columns, you want to type in the number two. So this is two hours per day. It's pretty much just you recording how much time this particular employee worked on this activity. So on the new line, you enter in these three dates. Just ignore all of this stuff here. Yours will just have the one line. Mine has several because I've done this numerous times. Then, once you have done that, you've entered in two hours for the first three days. Then you can click on Save. And if you get this error message or whatever this is, you can just click the green check mark. Then you'll be brought back here. For the last step of exercise 76 is you want to back up to here, close Cat's Classic, but still under Timesheet, go down to Transfer, and then All Components. From here, you want to put in your personnel number, so the same personnel number as before, mine is 1920. You want to check Project System, it should be the only one checked here, just Project System, and then uncheck test run. So that's the personnel number, project system, and then uncheck test run. Then from here you want to click on execute, and then you get this little report saying uh, which records have been saved and transferred. So this is where you want to take your screenshot. You want to make sure that I can see these numbers here, that three things have been read and saved that two hours were were done for each day, you know, 24th, 25th, 26th, two hours, and that it was work center 2700. Um, and that's, that's the key information I need, plus of course, your user ID. So once you've taken your screenshot, you can just exit out. And that's exercise 76. So then we're gonna skip exercise 77. Uh, we didn't cover it in class, so it's not going to be on the workshop. And we're going to go straight to exercise 78. So exercise 78 is us, like what we're going to be doing is doing a goods issue for our project, specifically to the production activity of our project. So what we have to do is within logistics, open up material uh, materials management, inventory management, goods movement, and then the first one here, uh, Migo. So uh, you can hide this overview if you see it. It's not important. Next, you want to make sure that this says goods issue and other, because it might not say that the first time you go into Migo. So goods issue, other, then over here, you want to make sure this box says uh, 221 and then hit enter so that it registers on the rest of the screen. Then down where it says material, you want to type in T-20100. Then for quantity, just type in 1. For plant, 1300. Storage location. 001. And next what you want to do is go up and click the green check mark. And that will make this account assignment tab appear. So you click on that. And then for a, for the WBS element that we're issuing this to, we want to issue this to our production WBS element. So that would be the name of your project. So mine is 63 and then point 0.4, because point 0.4 is the production element. So that's where it's getting issued to. 
And then with that, while you still have this open with showing the WBS element, I want you actually, yeah, what I want you to do is click check. And what will happen is, actually, sorry. After you write this, you want to make sure you click on enter so that the WBS element will also show up here because when you click on check, you'll get this error message and you're supposed to get this error message. What you want to do is move the error message down so that I can still see this line item here with the WBS element, the storage location, the quantity, and the material short text, uh, as well as uh, the stuff down here uh, where it says the WBS element and all that. Now, if you have a really small screen and you can't, it's not possible for you to show all this, you can either put the, the work or the, uh, the error message up here, you can put it down here, just as long as I can see this line and this stuff down here, as well as the error message itself. So there's a chance that you could either receive this error message or another error, error message. Check the answer key um, to see what I mean. I, I'm not going to explain it in detail now because this video is already going to be long enough. So, but pretty much this is where you take your screenshot. As long as I see this, this, and this stuff here, you'll be fine. So since you're getting an error message and you can't get around it, you can just close this and back out of the transaction without saving. So no, we don't want to save. So that is exercise 78. So next, exercise 79. We are posting an actual cost to our project. So the way we do that is we have to minimize logistics, open up accounting, financial accounting, general ledger, document entry, and then enter GL account document. So we're actually, you know, entering straight into our general ledger here. So for company code, we're going to put in 1000. For document date, you want to put today. And then we have a bunch of information to put down here. You want to make sure posting date and currency also look like this as well. For general ledger account, you want to type in 476900 for the first one, and then 113100 for the second account. Debit for the first line, credit for the second. Both amounts will be 1200. Then if we expand this out right here, we'll see that tax code is sitting right here. Not Now you want to make sure you don't want to put tax jurisdiction code, but rather tax code. And you want to type in zero and then the letter I. And then you want to scroll all the way over to where it says WBS element. And you want to type in T-200 and then your number, mine 63, and then dot one. This is the WBS element that we want to post actual costs for. Make sure it's not dot four, but dot one. And so once you do that, you can cl click on enter. Now, at this point, you will receive an error message, and that's fine. That's what we want, because unfortunately, the IDES client hasn't been configured in a way that allows us to complete this transaction. So at this point, you're going to want to take your screenshot, but you want to make sure that we see exactly these pieces of information. I need to see that your document date, posting date, and currency are right. Uh, I need to see these accounts, these debits and credits, these amounts and then this WBS element. I don't want it to be scrolled over near the tax code. I want it to be scrolled over near the WBS element so that it's displayed there. And then of course I need to see that you received the error message and I need to see your user ID. So those are the key pieces of information. You can just take a screenshot here and then you can just back out saying, uh, yes, you want to exit editing because you don't want to save it. So that's exercise 79. And then lastly, we have exercise 80. So what do we do for exercise 80? Well, you can minimize accounting, open up logistics, 
I'll uh, close some things up here. Project system. And then information system. Financials. Costs. Plan based. By cost element. And then the second option. Actual plan variance, absolute variance percentage. Double click on that. For database profile, you want to type in 11 zeros and then the number 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then the number 1. Hit that check mark. Then for here, you want to make sure controlling area is 1,000. Fiscal year, you can just set it to be 2017 because that's the, obviously that's the only year that this project has been created in because it's a brand new project. And then I believe all the other information is good. Just make sure obviously that it's the same project, although that should be populated automatically and this should say one and 12. Then you can click execute. So this just shows a, a collection of various reports showing you know, the actual costs, the project planned costs, all that good stuff. And for your screenshot, all I need is you to highlight engineering and design right here so that way we can see that it's displayed here and and then just take a screenshot so all I all I need you to do is be displaying specifically the costs related to engineering and design so I'll, I when I'm grading these I'll be looking at to see if this is here and uh, if this is here as well the, the 188 and if you don't get the 188 it's not the end of the world. Um, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to grade it if there are different totals, but the main thing I'm looking for is engineering and design. So yeah, once you take a screenshot there, you can just back out. Uh, you can click yes to exit. And with that, you're, you're done. That's all you really have to worry about for the workshop tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video didn't go on too long, but, uh, and uh, I know it wasn't as polished as the other ones, but hopefully that will uh, do well for you. So, yeah, have a good one.